Welcome to Defense Talks Matters. Today I'll give a straight breakdown of what Pakistan showed at PIMC 2025, the naval Shahpar 3, the Sarfarosh loitering munition that was displayed alongside it, and why their combination matters in the Arabian Sea contest with India. At the exhibition, Pakistan unveiled a navalized Shahpar 3 that is clearly intended for real operations, not just a static mock-up. Key facts shown and repeated in exhibitor material, six underwing hardpoints, SATCOM beyond line of sight communications, an AESA class maritime radar, an EO IR turret, a service ceiling in the 35,000, 40,000 feet band, and advertised endurance of roughly 30, 40 hours. That package, long endurance, high ceiling, and BLAS data links turns Shahpar 3 into a persistent maritime eyes on asset, able to patrol choke points and EEZ approaches for long periods. The weapons and sensor loadout is the game changer. Visuals and the show briefings highlighted Sonobue dispensers and pylons cleared for lightweight torpedoes. Practically speaking, this airframe, most realistically, carries weapons in roughly the 200, 350 kilograms class. Expect operational loadouts to be a mix. Several sono buoys for acoustic search and classification, plus one guided lightweight torpedo for prosecution. That trade-off preserves endurance and data link bandwidth, while giving the drone a real means of action against underwater targets. In the toral choke points, an unmanned platform that can lay sono buoys relay acoustic data by SATCOM, and launch an airdrop torpedo is a major multiplier for anti-submarine coverage. Crucially, Pakistan also showcased Sarfarosh, a turbojet-powered loitering munition designed for long-range standoff strike. Sarfarosh is the punch to Sharpar III's eyes. Reported specs and messaging at the show describe Sarfarosh as a long-endurance loiterer, optimized to strike time-sensitive high-value targets radars, command nodes, air defense assets, and small surface vessels. The exhibition material suggested standoff reach and smart terminal seekers. Public reporting has cited ranges in the order of hundreds to around 1,000 kilometers for similar systems, meaning Sarfarash can be launched or queued from well outside enemy point defense envelopes. Put bluntly, Sharpar 3 finds and fixes a target Sarfarosh flies in from standoff and kills it. What does this sensor to shooter pairing change on the tactical map? Three immediate effects matter. First, persistent maritime domain awareness. A Sharpar 3 that can stay aloft 30, 40 hours and communicate via SATCOM reduces blind spots along approaches and EEZs. That continuous presence improves detection windows and shortens reaction time for surface and subsurface threats. Second, distributed lethality. When an unmanned system can both detect and deliver a weapon, a torpedo, or the adversary's calculus changes. Surface units must plan for remote sensor cues leading to quick kinetic action. Convoys need more escorts, anti-torpedo measures, and deception. Naval operations become more expensive and complicated for any force operating close to Pakistan's approaches. Third, strategic signaling and autonomy. These platforms are largely indigenous. Local design and manufacture mean Pakistan can iterate rapidly, avoid some foreign transfer constraints, and field tailored solutions. That industrial independence is an overt political message. Pakistan can field new asymmetric tools without waiting on external suppliers. That said, exhibition is not equal to full operational capability. There are real technical and operational caveats. Torpedo integration is harder than pictures suggest. You need reliable carriage racks, safe release mechanisms, arming and safing logic, and a fire control solution that converts acoustic sonobu fixes into a launch solution with acceptable probability of kill. Sonoboy processing demands either high-end onboard processors or extremely low latency, high bandwidth data links to ship shore processing nodes. Each step requires trials, certification, and doctrine development. Survivability is another issue. In contested waters, UAVs face fighters, shipborne SAMs, and electronic attack. High ceiling patrols help, 
but Pakistan will need layered tactics, high altitude standoff patrols, EW measures, integration with fighters and escorts, or simply operate under protective umbrellas. Payload trade-offs are unavoidable. Carrying a torpedo reduces loiter time or forces removal of sensor packages, so commanders will tailor loadouts for ISR, ASW search, or armed interdiction. Rules of engagement and command and control are critical. A sensor to shooter chain shortens decision cycles and raises the risk of miscalculation in proximate exercise zones. Authentication, positive target ID, and strict C2 protocols must be in place to avoid accidental escalation. What to watch next? Five concrete signals that will show if this is moving from exhibit to force multiplier. Official induction notices or squadron announcements from Pakistan Navy or Air Force. Live fire trials showing Sunoboy deployment, acoustic classification, and a torpedo run. Joint drills where Shapar 3 operates with surface ships and demonstrates data-linked targeting. Changes in Indian deployments, more ASW assets, fast escorts or counter UAV investments, and production orders or export interests that show confidence and scale. Bottom line, the Naval Shapar 3 is already significant as a persistent maritime sensor. When paired with and one Sona Boy, torpedo workflows are fully tested. It becomes a layered, low-cost sensor shooter architecture that complicates Indian planning in the Arabian Sea. Showcasing these systems at PIMC 2025 was intentionally visible messaging. Pakistan is fielding indigenous tools to monitor and, if necessary, strike across its approaches. Please subscribe to our channel for more update. See you guys in next video.